Welcome to Kid News. I'm your host Prasad. In 2006, Al Tantuya Sharibu was brutally murdered. Two elite police personnel were convicted of her murder, but we still don't know why they did it. And now Lim Kit Seung wants the case to be revisited following the latest development in France. Veteran lawmaker Lim Kit Seung has called on the Public Accounts Committee to consider interrogating two former elite police personnel convicted for the murder of Al Tantuya Sharibu. Lim said this was necessary in light of the formal French investigations on alleged corruption involving the sale of Scorpion submarines to Malaysia in 2002. In a statement, Lim said the PSC should consider interrogating Azila Hadri, who is currently on death row, and Cyril Azar Uma, who is currently seeking refuge in Australia. Lim added that the PSC should consider a parliamentary plea to the young Dipertuan Agong to commute the death sentence for both convicted killers in the effort to establish the motive for the murder of Al Tantuya. The PSC's explicit mandate is to investigate matters concerning government finance. Al Tantuya was linked to at least one person involved in the procurement of the submarines. Al Tantuya was murdered in 2006. When Cyril and Azila were tried for murder, it was revealed that Al Tantuya was in an affair with Abdul Razak Baginda, the owner of several companies involved in the Scorpion submarine deal. Cyril and Azila were both convicted in 2009 but freed by the Court of Appeal in 2013. Upon being freed, Cyril fled to Australia, where he is currently under detention. Following this, the federal court overturned the appeal and reinstated the conviction, which carries the death sentence. Azila attempted to seek a review of the federal court decision in 2019. In his statutory declaration, Azila claimed that he was given a shoot-to-kill order by then-Deputy Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak on the grounds that Al Tantuya was a foreign spy. Azila's application for the review was unsuccessful. Lim Kit Seung appears to have caught the attention of Najib Abdul Razak with the call for the PAC to look into it. Now Najib has his own questions. Former Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak has urged Lim Kit Seung to explain why he did not show interest in the death of Yuin Berhat founder Yu Sui Keng. Taking to Facebook, Najib appeared to take offence with Kit Seung suggesting that the Public Accounts Committee should interview two former police personnel, Cyril Azar Uma and Azila Adri. Najib, calling Lim Kit Seung an uncle on his Facebook post, questioned why he was so interested in the death that occurred more than 10 years ago, which has been investigated multiple times. However, Najib pointed out that Kit Seung did not appear to be interested in the mysterious death of a famous listed company owner. Yu was found dead at the ground floor of a luxury apartment on October 5th last year. Yu and his family lived in a penthouse on the 17th floor. He was assumed to have fallen to his death. The court would eventually be told that the MACC recorded statements from you four times. Excerpts of his final statement to the Graph Buster were read out on March 24th. Yu said he met then Penang Chief Minister Lim Guan Eng in 2011. Yu also said he wanted to develop a piece of reclaimed land and had promised to give several pieces of real estate to Guan Eng if the plan succeeded. Hundreds showed up in Nagendran's hometown in Ipoh today to pay their final respects after he was executed earlier this week. Nagendran Dharmalingam, a Malaysian who was executed on Wednesday in Singapore, has been cremated in his hometown of Ipoh, Perak. Nagendran was on death row for more than a decade for trafficking about 42.7 grams of heroin into Singapore. His execution was carried out after the courts in Singapore rejected his final appeal. The funeral at his family's home was attended by some 200 people. Nagendran's mother, Panchale Supramaniam, was so distraught she even needed help walking. Nagendran's case attracted global attention, with a group of United Nations experts and British billionaire Richard Branson joining Malaysia's Prime Minister and human rights activists to urge Singapore to commute his death sentence. His lawyers and activists have said Nagendran's IQ was found to be at 69, a level recognised as intellectually disabled. However, the courts determined he knew what he was doing at the time of his crime and ruled that there was no admissible evidence showing any decline in his mental condition. The resignation of the Security Commission's executive chairperson has left Lim Guan Eng in a bit of a shock and he's demanding answers from the government. The Prime Minister and the Attorney General have been urged to explain Securities Commission Executive Chairperson Syed Zayed Syed Jafar's shock resignation. DAP Chairperson Lim Guan Eng also wants to know why Awang Adik Hussein was appointed as his successor. 
This came after a report linked the resignation to the Attorney General's Chamber's handling of a fraud case involving oil and gas company Serba Dynamic Holdings Berhad. The resignation came just six months after Zayed Zayed was reappointed as SC Executive Chairperson for a second three-year term. A report by The Edge yesterday links Syed Zayed's resignation to the AGC's decision to withdraw charges against Serba Dynamic. The company was accused of filing false financial statements to the stock exchange in what is described as the largest corporate fraud by a Bursa-listed company. The report said this left the SC with no option but to issue the fines instead. It slapped the maximum compound on Serbi Dynamic and five of its executives, which it did to the tune of 3 million ringgit each, on April 13. The Kedah Menteri Besar has been accused of committing criminal defamation by a BN leader. Selangor BN Information Chief Isham Jalil lodged a police report this morning against Kedah Menteri Besar Muhammad Sanusi Noor. The report was in connection with the purported leak of past meeting minutes. In his report, Hisham alleged Sanusi committed criminal defamation when the past leader accused him of fabricating the meeting minutes. It contained the alleged findings of two past leaders after they visited various figures from Amno, Bursatu and Pejuang. Hisham, who was a special officer of former Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak, urged the police to investigate Sanusi under the penal code or any other relevant law. In a press conference two days ago, Sanusi commented on the purported leaked documents. He reportedly dismissed the document as the work of past opponents and trained his guns at BN. He claimed that the document could have been fabricated by a cyber trooper who has vested interests and allegedly made a reference to Isham. Look out past, Kuli is assembling a new coalition to take over the state government in Kelantan when G15 comes. Gua Musang MP Tengku Razali Hamza will lead a new coalition called Angkatan Amanah Merdeka Rakyat Kelantan. The coalition's main objective would be to overthrow the past state government in the upcoming 15th general election. This was revealed by Kelantan Amanah Deputy Chairperson Che Ibrahim Mohamad on Thursday. The coalition's first program will take place on May 7th. Malaysia previously reported that the AMNO veteran had collaborated with the Pakatan Harapan Allied Party to capture Kelantan in GE15. Malaysia Kini understands that the collaboration will involve Amana, DAP and Pejuang as well as NGOs. Meanwhile, Katere MP Anwar Musa described Kuli's action as being conducted in a personal capacity and had nothing to do with AMNO. The new minimum wage announced by Prime Minister Esma Sabri Yaakob has finally been gazetted. The new minimum wage of 1,500 ringgit a month effective May 1st was officially gazetted yesterday. The minimum wage order issued by the Human Resources Minister M. Saravanan was published in the Federal Government Gazette. It was also uploaded on the official website of the Attorney General's Chambers today. With that, the minimum wages order 2020 is now revoked. Prime Minister Isma Sabri Yaakob had previously announced a minimum wage rate of 1,500 ringgit per month nationwide, starting May 1st. Meanwhile, the Federation of Malaysian Manufacturers previously raised concerns that the immediate jump to the new minimum wage may result in a steep cost increase and reverse the otherwise optimistic business recovery for 2022. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kidneytv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malajkini.com. I'm Prasad Michael. Thank you for watching.